been a week since I finished the West Coast Trail and I had to rest up my leg and then I got sick. So uh, I needed about a week, a week and a half to recover. So now I'm ready to go for another hike and I'm going to go check out Lomas Lake and see if I can find it uh, up some logging road here. Well, I just hiked about a kilometer and a half up and down the wrong path. Uh, this road here wasn't even on my uh, trail, so I'm not sure where it came from, but uh, it seemed like it was leading up towards Mount Service. I hit the end of it, and uh, that's when I looked at my GPS and realized I was way off course. So I'm just gonna hike back down, probably about 20 or 30 minutes to get back down there, and then I'll take the fork up the correct valley because, I mean, the other one looks pretty good, but I really want to get to this lake and check it out. All right, I'm back at the fork, and see, I went left here, and I should have gone right. Uh, well, now I guess I'll go right and see if I can get to the lake now. Found one salmon bear here that's already fruited. Also found a sweater that somebody left behind. All right, I just hit the jackpot here. This is a blueberry plant, and it is, you know, they're a little small, but they'll do. The berries have been uh, fruiting a little later this season, so there's not too many yet, just yet. But I got a good handful here, and uh, this will be a good little snack. Mm. I've made it to Lomas Lake, and this is a pretty awesome alpine lake here. Uh, there is a trail that takes me up to the ridge, the, uh, along the ridge, and I believe up to that peak there. And it'd be great to do to get a view of the whole valley, but uh, I think I'm running out of time here. It's about 5.30, and it's going to take me about four hours to get down. So I can only really hang out at this lake for an hour, and if I go up there, it's going to take me probably an hour to get up there, and then another hour back down. So I'm just going to hang out at the lake here, read a book, and have some dinner. So I just about made it back to the main path. Uh, it's still another seven kilometers from my car, but uh, I think I've got like an hour of sunlight left, maybe a little more. I probably won't make it back to my car, but uh, it's okay. I'm on the main path and I've got a headlamp so I can just uh, throw that on and hike in the dark if I have to. Watch this. 
there's something coming. It's pretty big. Oh, there it is. Check it out. It's a it's a giant elk. He's probably trying to get to the river. Oh, I'm gonna scare him. He doesn't see me at all. Now that it's nightfall, these little black banana slugs have come out. They are everywhere. They are all over this trail. Well, it's nighttime now, and I'm still about two and a half kilometers away from my car. I have a headlamp, but it's just not dark enough yet for me to put it on. I can still see. I have pretty good night vision. I don't really like hiking this late because, you know, this is when uh, cougars come out to hunt and uh, wolves and whatnot. And I've actually run into a cougar in conditions a lot like this before. Uh, I was hiking on top of a mountain and it got around this dark and I still wasn't at my campsite. And there was a cougar that was stalking me over a ridge and I tried banging my sticks and throwing rocks at it, and that did nothing. Uh, then I turned the corner and it followed me, so I tried it again. And the second time I did it, I managed to scare the cougar away. So, if ideally you don't want to be hiking in conditions like I am right now. I made it back to my car. It's over here. Time is 10 o'clock. So it's not bad considering I left at 1.30. Managed to get up there, hang out at the lake for an hour, and come back down. Uh, roughly nine hours of hiking. So I've gotten a bit of a heat rash, I guess, in the last couple days here, sleeping in my car. And I think I just have way too much moisture in here. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to tear out the carpets here on my car bed and I also am going to build some mosquito netting for my windows. That way I can uh, keep them open at night instead of just a tiny crack. I forgot to bring my screwdriver with me in my car so I gotta buy another one but until then I'm using uh, the can opener it has a, a little tip here and it seems to work with uh, these Robson head screws. So I'm going to need a screwdriver to put this back in, but at least I can use this to take it out and then cut the carpet out. Hey guys, so I'm here with Missy and her dog Sailor and we're gonna go see if we can find some caves that are supposed to be around here in the Lake Cowichan area. Uh, we followed some loose directions which didn't really bring us to where we should be but uh, we stumbled across this uh, gate here, parked the car and we're gonna go for a bit of a hike and see if we can find these caves. Alright, we still haven't found the caves. Uh, it's really hot out and we're at the top of a mountain following some old logging roads, but I'm pretty confident we'll find them soon. So we were walking by and we saw the shadow of an owl fly above us and looked up. And check it out, you can see him, he's right in that tree. He's really hard to see though. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in. There he is, blends in so well. So we found the caves and uh, Missy's just going to head in and check them out. I got a headlamp so I'll throw that on and 
we'll do a bit of exploring. We're not going to go too far in because we don't have any like caving gear, but uh, just to check out the entrance should be fine. It's uh, the entrance to the cave. I sort of climbed down and then, uh... oh, it gets bigger here. Let's see up here. Mm, it might be a tight squeeze. Looks like there's another opening up there. And I'm gonna go down a little bit further, see if there's any more tunnels down there. All right, so there's a bunch of uh, water coming down here. And uh, it looks like there's two different cracks you can go down. You can see that rock over there wedged in. That's That rock already is smaller than me, so for me to wedge in there I'm just would be pretty difficult. I do wanna go there, but I don't have the proper gear to go any further than this, so I think I'm gonna head back. And you can see up here, there's a little, few little cracks leading out. You can see daylight coming through. And then, so I came into this top part and you can see roots here from the trees above. That's really cool. And I gotta be careful here because I'm not wearing a helmet and you definitely don't want to hit your head on that. This is uh, Bear Creek Caves. Uh, somebody's carved a salmon here into this tree stump. That's pretty cool. So I'm in uh, Honeymoon Bay and I'm just taking a short little walk through this ecological reserve, basically just a section of forest the government didn't allow them to log. Uh, it's pretty nice here and uh, it's just a short little walk though. But today what I want to try and do is get to, apparently there's a plane crash that happened in World War II, some sort of military plane went down in one of the mountains around here and you can see debris and apparently there's some like old deactivated logging roads that you can drive up and I couldn't find any information about this other than like this old hiking book from 2003 so I don't know how accurate that's going to be or if my car is even going to be able to handle those roads and get there so It'll be a bit of adventure and uh, there might be some more caves coming up that I might do tomorrow. Oh, my shirt on backwards? So I already tried to find a waterfall earlier today and I was unsuccessful because uh, the logging roads apparently that you had to go up have been closed. Uh, they built a gate and I couldn't drive there. I could just hike into the falls but That'll probably take like a day or two and it'll be on all open logging roads uh, with the sun beating down and I don't really want to do that. So I think I'll just skip those and I'll see what other trails I can get to and uh, hopefully I'll find some trails that don't have uh, their roads blocked off by logging gates. All right, I'm just about at the turnoff, I think, where I need to head up another logging road, and I came across a gate, but the gate is actually open. Today is my lucky day. I can actually go further. Let's see if I can get all the way there. Here's the fork, which I'm supposed to take a left, and the road looks pretty good still. Should, shouldn't have any problems driving on this with my car. So the road is getting pretty rough here, but uh, I know my Civic and it can handle roads like this. I've gone on a lot of logging roads, so you just got to take it slow over all these big potholes. Alright, so according to the book, it's a really steep climb here and the road gets pretty bad. So I don't know if my Civic can actually make it up here, but I guess I'm going to give it a try. Switch into my Drive 3 and off I go. I'm at this crazy high lookout point here. Couldn't bring my car up this logging road any further, so I'm going on foot to see how far up I can make it. Oh yeah, look at this. 
that wouldn't have been too good for my car to try and get up. All right, there's a marker here on the side of the road. A little plane on that tree and a little trail. So I'm gonna follow this, see if it leads to the plane. Yeah, so you can see this must be its final resting spot, the plane, because there's debris from it here. Part of the fuselage, I guess, over there. Uh, over here, there's a memorial. And uh, some more plane parts over here. Looks like parts of an engine. Here is a memorial sign which has a bit of information about the plane and uh, the crash and the loggers going looking for it. You can see the white capped mountains way in the distance. It's kind of a shame all the logging that's going on through here. There's a lot of wilderness here. All right, according to some GPS files I have, uh, there should be some parts of the aircraft, like the wings, in here somewhere. I hiked up through the bush. Whew, it took me about 30 minutes of bushwhacking over dead logs and this sort of stuff just to get in here. So I'm gonna see if I can find a part of the aircraft over here. Oh, it's a good danger log here. Okay, so I found one part of the wing. That's over here. That's a wingtip. This is crazy that it's over here because the actual crash site is like a kilometer down that way. So I guess the plane came in like this, lost its two wings here because the other one is supposed to be over there and then soared down to its final resting place at the bottom there. And here is the other wing. Some of the casualties uh, when you're bushwhacking and climbing over log piles. I'll bandage that up. I didn't bring my first aid kit with me. I forgot it, so I'll bandage it up when I get back. It's probably gonna be another hour to climb back down through this and back to the car. Oh shit. There's a mama bear and her cub right there. There's another baby bear that just walked by and the mama bear is circling around me here. I have to get by on this road. My car is down there. All right. Hey! Hey, so I just had a pretty uh, intense moment there. I came across a bear and she had at least two cubs with her. I was walking down uh, the logging road here back to my car and uh, she popped out on the road and saw me and uh, she started to charge at me and I shouted really loud like <laughs> I've never shouted so loud in my life she stopped went into the bush but her two cubs uh, they kept coming up onto the road going back in coming up and like I needed to cross so I was just waiting there I backed up and I waited for about three or four minutes and the cubs were just still staying there so I didn't know what to do though I could hear the mother in the bush uh, circling around so I decided I had to go through, so I just made a lot of noise and went through. 
when I go hiking, I always carry my knife with me. You know, I don't <laughs> want to fight a bear with this knife, but it does give me some sense of security that at least if I was attacked by a bear or a cougar or something, I could at least defend myself somehow. Uh, either way, I will probably be sleeping well tonight. All right, and now for the tricky part, I got to try and make it back down this huge slope here without popping a tire or doing any damage to my car. I'm a good three-day hike away from civilization if I were to break down, so 